Hey guys, Rob from Georgia here with you, aka VHS82 Apostrophe, with episode 6 of my crazy vibes. Oh, those gnarly scenes of brutality. Oh, man. Five? Really? Seriously? Boil things down to five? You know this is volume one, and I'll revisit this one again as well, because I just picked five five that were the, like the first ones that really settled on my mind when I started to think it out I thought you know yeah that'll work that'll work but then there's this and then there's that and then there's this and there's that and this and yeah we'll just come back and do another volume if you will right uh so crazy fives man five always have one outside looking in you see it up there man Franco Prosperi's man the wild beast uh from um uh, 1984 first uh brought to us on uh lightning video on vhs uh in 83 83 um and uh the scene in question here the act of brutality it, it the the, ugh, the rat scene man involving carl and faye man a couple characters in the beginning now this movie if you're not familiar with this movie man it's like what would happen if pcp got into the water supply now you're thinking cocaine bear right we just had that sort of going the idea is fresh and the public conscious sort of right but back in the early 80s man this movie basically took the concept of what would happen if pcp got in the water supply and it a uh, affect an entire zoo of animals and that zoo uh got uh because of uh i think it was a power outage or something this zoo had a unique security uh but it was all power controlled or whatever and so the, everything, all the cages open and all these animals, man, that are lit up on PCP, man, are unleashed on this city, man. And it is, it offers some extremely frightening uh, imagery, although the film in itself in, in total isn't necessarily a frightening film. Um, it does, um, it does offer up a few unique Italian accesses that you ought to be uh, aware of if you ever get a chance. It's one of those weird movies that you probably... I don't even know if it's streaming or anything like that. I happen to have the physical media copy of this, of course, um, from uh, Severn. Severn put this out. And so that's what that looks like. Um, but the rat scene. A uh, young couple, man, uh, the first ones to feel the onslaught are these rats that are coming up now. They're in the car messing around with one another. Uh, and that's one scene of excess uh, that you have to be aware of. Um, sort of why I have my blanket draped over that part of the TV. Um, but the brutality scene of these rats, man, it, it just has to be seen to be believed, man. They get into the car, man, and they just start gnawing on them both, man. And then ultimately when, uh, when the, uh, first responders do get there, man, obviously there's nothing left, but just, I mean, eating people, man. And, uh, they just go out in the most brutal way. And uh, there's, in, in, in the, the midst of that scene, too, there's a cat that is getting mauled by these rats. And I wonder if that's not a real cat getting attacked by rats, because it, it, it looks gnarly. Just the cat scene looks really gnarly. Um, but what they do to this couple, man, uh, is, uh, is one of the more gnarly scenes I can remember seeing in a movie in a while. So outside looking in the rat sequence, uh, for uh, the unfortunate uh, uh, demise of Carl and Faye. All right, let's get into the top five. Now, remember, I do things chronological by year, so I don't put a lot of thought into what ought to come first or not, and it's not really about that, man. It's really just about awareness, I think, of certain aspects of certain films and ones that, quite frankly, maybe you've never checked out. So here we go. First, first one that really popped in my head, I think, one of the first one besides the rat sequence, uh, was uh, Rob Zombie's man from uh, 09, his H2 Halloween 2. And the scene that I'm thinking about in here in particular is Nurse Daniels. <clears throat> and uh, this is part of, of course, the uh, greater dream sequence, the great homage. Uh, I'll call it that, yes. It, the great homage or nod to the original Halloween 2, which most all the movie is set up, of course, in the hospital. Uh, this is a dream, a nightmare sequence uh, that Lori is having, of course. But man, she's she's out of her room. She shouldn't be out of her room. She's trying to get something for her headache. Nurse Daniels, who plays Ma, is Ma, 
uh, in that movie. Um, I don't know if I wrote the year down for that, but it's a recent Octavia Spencer. So I'm talking about, um, and she also was, uh, did a couple X files or at least one X file show back in the day. Um, but she is ma, right, man. So she comes around, man, the corner, she had already been split with a knife, man, very subtle, but the blood just starts and she just starts to lose all sense of her ability to even stand. And of course, Lori, you know, kind of is pushed back and she falls down and, Man, here he comes, man. Michael comes around the corner, and it's got to be one of the most intimidating scenes. I, I'm just going to say, in the entire franchise that we know as Halloween, that moment when he comes around the corner, dude, man, it's nothing but pure terror, man. And when he goes in, now Lori takes off, but man, when he goes into North, uh, Nurse Daniels with the butcher knife, man, I mean, right from the top, I mean, holding her down, and wham, 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 wham. I mean, it is that's not brutal i don't know what brutality is um what a phenomenal actress though man uh not just to take that <laughs> but uh she's in a ton of stuff man she's got a huge filmography man so if you didn't realize that's who that was in that sequence it's pretty awesome man um second one i really haggled over this one uh, but at number four from 19 oh by the way eight oh yeah no vhs release for uh h2 obviously it's an 09 film the rest of them all do though the stage fright uh number four 1987 michele Sauvé. uh of course this is uh, my uk edition i love the artwork man it's not my ideal uh but it is uh, much better than uh the american release uh, i think screen factory put it out and uh um yeah screen factory put that out um pretty sure it was shout anyways uh the scene in question here i mean there's a few you can choose man ultimately in the end i, I had i had a rough one with this one but ultimately, I went with um, Peter's demise, man. He gets it, man. If not if not just the chainsaws enough and his arm comes off, uh, as he's trying to reach uh, for the axe that he was holding, uh, the killer grabs the axe out of his lifeless arm and then takes his head off. And, it and then later on, as an extension, once our killer, our owl head killer, uh, Irving Wallace is up on the stage and all the bodies are piled up on there in a very theatrical setup way. Um, he holds up uh, Peter's head up and then ultimately puts it, uh, or he knocks the head off of a mannequin and then he puts his head up on top of it. And uh, that man, Peter, of course, that comes right after Peter kind of throws the girl uh, to buy him just a few seconds, I guess, you know, and uh, Irving Wallace wasn't going to have any of that. So Peter, Peter does go out in a pretty brutal, brutal way. Uh, Imperial, <clears throat> which I do have the VHS, the original VHS uh, release, which I would have rented too, but I also have it in my collection. Uh, Imperial put that out in 87. Of course, David Brandon plays Peter in that scene. And uh, just a, uh, and you could see him too, uh, I think in 13 in a movie called Never Lake. Um, phenomenal actor, one of my favorite actors um, from Italian cinema. Stage fright at number four, man. Number three. How could you not include this in a top five? Even if it's, if it's an initial, you know, shot across the bow. Friday the 13th, part four, Jason's demise. Um, Tom Savani's work in here is on freaking parallel, man. Dude, wait, when Tommy come, when Tommy comes around the corner with the uh with the machete, and not really around the corner, but he comes up and wham, just buries the machete. And man, when Jason's body just sort of falls on his knees and then he just kind of goes over and hitting the floor allows the machete to do the rest of the work, and we just see the head sort of cave in. Really, I saw this in the theater. What is this? 80, 84, right? 84, 1984. Um, of course, Ted, Ted White plays uh, Jason in this one, right? Um, he actually got his start in the Sands of Iwo Jima, which is interesting. He plays a Marine in there. But he's also it wasn't in an X-File episode, which is pretty cool. Joseph Zito, of course, directed uh, Friday 4. And if you actually have this one, you have a fan commentary with Adam Green, which is pretty cool. Um, but that sequence, man, when you're in a theater, I mean, this is it. This whole movie was built up that this was Jason's final exit. Now, we know the history, ultimately. But when you're sitting in a theater at 14, I forget about that. 14, I sat in the theater. I saw Friday 4, and I also saw a night, the original Nightmare on Elm Street. 
which is pretty epic um all in and of itself there but i mean this is it man and then of course man the fingers move and tommy man just goes in and just rah, rah. and of course this opens up the great segue right the opportunities that never really went anywhere uh but it did offer up its potential opportunities not so unlike halloween 4 with uh our little daniel harris at the top of the staircase with the bloody scissors uh and that had also opened up some great potential obviously never tapped into makes you wonder what would have been had they decided to be that bold and kind of take that unique turn have her grow up man she could have grown up in an insane asylum and i don't know who you would have got to play her older self but that that's you know i've always wondered what that could have been like but the demise of jason and uh, savani's excellent work um i'm also going to mention another piece of savani's work here in a second um Jason's demise is pretty, uh, it, it is a pretty epic way out. Um, you know, Michael's exit in Halloween, the original Halloween 2 is pretty epic. Um, and those two might have had the most epic outs. Now we know Jason's coming back, right? Um, in part six, they'll resurrect him in a sort of old school universal type way, which I always found really, really cool about that. Plus Alice Cooper's on that soundtrack, right? So Friday 4, man, first release, of course, by Paramount. Uh, in 84 on VHS. Uh, I was going to say I had that one on VHS. I don't. I have part seven on VHS. Anyways, number two, another uh, another uh, Joseph uh, Zito film from this one from 1981, but also uh, Tom Savandi's excellent work. This one involves a bayonet, man. Of course, we are talking The Prowler from 1981. I remember seeing this in the video stores. <clears throat> And, um, boy, that pull scene is something else. But the scene I'm going to reference here, man, for its act of brutality is the bayonet scene on that poor kid, man. When uh, our prowler comes up behind him and, man, just puts his hand around him, man, and just takes that bayonet and <laughs> just right through. But the, the best part about that whole sequence is how his eyes just roll white. It is so stinking creepy. Uh, that, might be, that might be one of Tom Savani's best works and toward it in, 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 in the sense of his subtleness and its creepiness and it's just a, the aesthetics of it it really is uh an unsettling vibe to see this poor kid now the pool scene obviously him in the pool you always remember that scene from the old vhs day, days um interesting movie the prowler man interesting movie uh so look at that uh, joseph zito gave us two within a few years of one another he capped off at least it should have been perhaps a cap off to the friday films but also gave us a unique film the prowler which is pretty pretty cool okay number one man see you like how i do this up here you have no idea what my number one is you're like what on earth is now remember all chronological right oh by the way uh prowler was vci um in 81 released that on vhs this one, my number one film, uh, released in, I'm not going to say the year right now, but it was released on VHS and MPI. Finally, funny, we were talking, our Body Bags crew uh, did our bi-weekly chat last night. And uh, this film came up, uh, in, in terms of its VHS release, came up a few times. We were talking about it. <sighs> my number one film. This scene gave me nightmares. I probably saw it way too young. And... Yeah, it, 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 I think it's one of the greatest horror films ever made. It's definitely will never be my comfort food type horror film. But we are talking 1974, Toby Hooper's infamous Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's a steel uh, case I got at Walmart years ago. Um, not a bad little uh, setup there. Um not a bad setup at all, man. A fully loaded, tons of documentaries. Uh, the the shocking truth documentaries on there, uh, commentaries. Um, it just just an amazing five bucks. I found this at Walmart. Got to be one of the best deals ever. Um, I don't know if there was a book in the original release. You know, you always wonder because when you see these things. Um, but uh, Toby Hooper, man, it's Kirk, man, Kirk, uh, who is. Uh, He's one of the uh, guys in the uh, in the beginning of the scene of Poltergeist, man, watching the football game. Uh, Kirk, of course, walks into the house first, his uh, uh, his girl outside waiting. William Vale plays Kirk. 
Uh, of course, he goes in, he hears the weird sounds coming in from back, back in the back of the house, in that doorway, and uh, he goes and, it, I don't know what makes that scene so intense. It's like, he picks up his own pace to go in because he's so, curiosity is beyond, uh, has gotten him. And he's just like, what is that? And so, I mean, almost a natural over sense of curiosity carries him back, but man, as he stumbles over uh, the rampway going up, he sort of stumbles over, and as he does, Leatherface com comes right in with the hammer, and bam, and then poor Kirk, man, poor Kirk is just like, <laughs> which aesthetically, in terms of its brutality, um, very few scenes, and then it's capped off by one of the most stomach-sinking moments, and that is when he just drags him in there, man, like a rag doll, and then just slams that metal door. That first time I saw that, man, I was laying on my floor in front of my old 25-inch console TV, and man, I'm telling you, my stomach just dropped through that floor the minute that, and I thought, my, what have I gotten myself into with this one? Um, what an intense film. Hardly no blood in this movie. It's notorious for all the blood, which there really is no blood, but it's the, uh, it's the editing, man. It's the, uh, it's what's left to the imagination. It's what you think you see and you don't see. Uh, really, if one film and one film alone could make a director a, uh, a, a master of horror, uh, it's this. Toby Hooper is a master of horror. Now, he did other films, right, and good films, none of which I don't know ever reached the level of intensity as his original Shocker in 74, but that was a different age. That was a different age. That was a different time. And a lot of these directors were just so angry about all the things they were seeing around them. Uh, you know, whether it's him or Wes Craven or others, man. Last House on the Left or whatever. But Kirk scene, man. Um, yeah, and he's one of the guys watching the football game in Poltergeist. How about that? Um, the guy with the fishing hat on, uh, right? Who says, like, I bet my life on this game. Of course, you got the other guy out there with it. Back in the old days when controllers of your houses were too close could have that real that real sense of uh, overlay or whatever. It's pretty interesting. So at number one from 1974, of course, an MPI release on VHS, the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Kirk's Demise, The Prowler, the infamous bayonet scene, and the eyes roll white uh, is, uh, is my number uh, two. My number three was Friday 4, Jason's uh, ultimate death sequence, man. Makes you wonder what would have happened if they would have just left that as is. Uh, number four, of course, Peter's uh, demise at the hands of uh, Irvin Wallace. First, it's the chainsaw taking the arm off. The second one is the uh, the axe to the head, which is pretty brutal, man. Uh, pretty brutal. Um, and number five, Rob Zombie's H2 Nurse Daniels, man. Octavia um, Spencer, right? Yeah, Octavia Spencer, who plays Ma, uh, gets it in the most brutal way. Uh, and you're never going to, you're never going to uh, convince me otherwise that Rob Zombie's handprints aren't all over this last trilogy that came out. I know they wanted it to be furthest from his uh, his, but his prints are all over it, man. Those three movies at points do get pretty brutal. And it's because, it's because of the imprint Zombie had on his two movies. How could you not level or bring it up a little bit? And outside looking in, of course, the infamous rat scene from Frank or Prosperi's 1984 film, uh, The Wild Beast. Before there was Cocaine Bear, there was the unleashed PCP riddled animals of the zoo in the city somewhere over there in Europe. I can't even remember what's supposed to take place in Germany, maybe. Um, yeah, so there you go. Five, uh, six, really, acts of brutality. Volume one. I'll return to this again at some point. Easily, you know, there's so much to delve into. But these were, these were the ones that just sort of know, popped up on my head for some whatever reason. Um, so there you go, my crazy fives. Oh, those gnarly scenes of brutality. As always, as always, go Bills. This is not a dream, not a dream.